Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you drum editing using stretch markers in Reaper. Now, there's a few advantages and disadvantages of using stretch markers to edit drums. The big advantage to me is that you don't have to quantize everything. As you'll see, we can quantize certain sections, the tops of bars, just the kicks and snares, and leave some of the ghost notes and fills alone. But the downside is that we are stretching the audio, which requires a time stretching algorithm. So, in theory, we are degrading the sound, at least a bit. How bad that is, is up to you. If you don't like the results that you get, I would suggest using the non stretching method, which involves cutting the items, quantizing them, and then trimming back and crossfading on every split. I'll show this method in a future video called Drum Editing Without Stretch Markers. But in this video, we're going to use them. So we have a multi mic drum project in front of us. Let's hear what it sounds like. It sounds pretty good, but it's slightly out of time. And we could hear this better if we play it against the click or the metronome right here. You could hear it's not perfect, but we want to tighten that up so it's closer with the click. So the first thing we want to do is group the drum tracks because we recorded it with many microphones. We have a kick track, a snare, a snare bottom, a pair of toms, a pair of overheads, a pair of room mics, and a far room. So all these tracks need to stay in sync. So we're going to start by grouping them. So I'll select them all like this, go to the menu under item, and choose group. Group items. We could also do it just by hitting the key, G. And see right over here, that little button lets us know it's grouped. But in order for them to behave like a group, we have to turn this on over here, item grouping. Now if we move one, they all move together. Now we also need to right click the toolbar and turn off selecting one item selects the group. This is a very useful feature if you want to select one and have them all be selected. But for this process, we need to turn that off. Right click it, turn it off here. So now if we select one, it doesn't select them all, but they're still going to behave like a group. So now we want to create stretch markers. And to do this, we first want to choose which transients to analyze. Again, the benefit of using stretch markers, we don't have to quantize everything. So we could just quantize the kick, the snare, or the kick, snare, and overheads. But for this performance, we're just going to do the kick and snare and let the hi hats or cymbals float in between, how the drummer played them, which will keep some of the drummer's original feel. Let's start off with the snare. We'll select it. Then we're going to go to the view menu and choose dynamic split. Now this dialog is normally used to split our items based on their transients, but we're going to use it to create stretch markers. So we're going to turn on transients and leave off when gate opens and when gate closes. We don't need that for this. Then we're going to go down over here to set the transient sensitivity. Let's move this out of the way. And we could set our threshold to grab just the transients that we need. In this case, the snare hits. And I'm going to turn on this option right here. Display threshold in media items while this window is open. So with this chosen, we get these horizontal lines right here. So when we adjust this up and down, we can see what it's going to grab. It's only going to grab 
things that are higher than these lines. So if we go too low, it's going to grab these hi-hat hits in between. So just bring it up. So it just grabs the snare hits. Then we can close this and switch this from splitting selected items to writing stretch markers. And if we choose this option right here, write stretch markers, it's just going to write stretch markers to the snare like this. These are our stretch markers. But that's not going to work for us. We need to write stretch markers for all the tracks. So we'll choose this option instead. Write stretch markers to selected items and add to grouped items. So if we choose this instead and write the stretch markers, all the tracks now have them. But there's still a problem. We just have stretch markers based on the snare hits. We also want them based on the kicks. So let's select the kick track and do the same thing. Let's open dynamic split. But there's a problem with this. It's going to start all over again for the kick track. It removed the snare based markers. See they're gone? But there is a way around this. Let's first duplicate the kick right here. Then we'll choose one of those kicks and open dynamic split. Set the transient sensitivity for the kick. Find the threshold. Make sure we get all the kick hits. Write stretch markers. And it wrote stretch markers for all the kick hits. But notice in this track, the snares are gone. But that's okay. That's why we duplicated it. So now we can delete this track, and now we can still use this kick track. Because this wasn't the selected one, we still have the snare stretch markers and the kick stretch markers on this kick track. And now all the stretch markers line up for our kick hits and the snare hits. But I am noticing it didn't create one on this snare hit right here. So let's zoom in, and let's place one right here. We can create one by clicking it, hitting Shift W, and it created a stretch marker right there. And because the tracks are grouped, that stretch marker is on all the tracks. Let's zoom in on this first kick and make sure there's one there. And there's not, so let's add one. And instead of using Shift W, we can just hold down modifiers and click it. On PC, it's Alt Control. On Mac, it's Option Command. Hold them down and click. And that also creates a stretch marker. And now we have stretch markers for every single hit. So now we have two different options. We can either quantize it by hand by turning on the grid, setting that grid. Let's set it to eighth notes. And now I could shift it around manually. Just grab this one, move it here to the nearest downbeat, and do the same with each one of them. Move it to bar three, B2. Move this one to bar three, B3, and so on. But there is a much quicker way. Let's undo that. And instead, let's select it, right click it. Go to stretch markers, stretch markers in selected items, and snap to grid. And this is going to snap all those stretch markers to the nearest grid. In this case, a grid is set to eighth notes, but we can change it to whatever we need in the snap settings. So let's choose it, and all our stretch markers move to be in time. So now let's hear that back against the click. That sounds a lot better. Let's turn the click off. Now we should also listen back for any glitches or problems. And we could zoom in to make sure each one is in the right spot. That one is. And let's hear it back.
something sounds off right there, let's delete some of the stretch markers. On the PC, hold down Alt. On the Mac, hold down Option and just delete them to see what the problem is. There's a fill under there playing 16th notes. So it quantized it to eighth notes. We don't want that. But this illustrates a great point. We're only quantizing right here and right here. The start of the fill and the downbeat after the fill. Everything in between is pretty much how the drummer played it. So we're keeping some of the drummer's feel, which is one of the benefits of stretch markers. We don't have to quantize everything. Now, if we did want to quantize the drum fill, we could just zoom in and put a stretch marker right here, another one right here, one here, and finally one here. And we could either manually move it around like this, or we could do it automatically by selecting it, all the tracks, create a time selection just for this section, right click, go to stretch markers, stretch markers in selected items within time selection. That's why we created a time selection and then snap to grid. And it just quantized those four hits. So they sound like this. And again, the beauty of stretch markers is we can remove some of those markers, like the 16th notes, this one, and this one, to retain some feel. Or retain all that feel by removing these two as well. So that's pretty much it. That's drum editing using stretch markers in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.